Hello! Today we're going to be making a quick space station in Kerbal Orbit, about 200 kilometers above. You'll see I'm making a really easy rocket ship. It's the three-man lander with a monopropellant base and two liquid fuel engines, with a little thruster on the bottom and the docking port on the top. Now I'm adding a couple of solar panels here just to make it look a little bit more like a real space station. Then we're going to be adding a decoupler and the fairing around the payload. So this is going to be sitting on top of a Falcon Heavy rocket or something similar to it. I'm going to try as best as I can. And it looks really, really nice. I love this new feature in Kerbin uh, in Kerbal. I actually haven't played it in a number of years, so I've never seen it before. We're adding a couple big liquid fuel canisters on the bottom, and then a big ol' uh, propulsion unit way underneath that. On the side, I'm putting on two of these Clydesdale rockets. They're solid fuel, they burn really, really quick, and for the weight of this rocket ship, they're probably overkill, but they're going to do a nice job. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to send two of these up. We're going to have a front-to-front -front docking connect connection, and I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy um, once you get the hang of it. When you shoot these guys off, we're going to aim for about 100 meters per second. At that point, throttle down to about three quarters, and then I start to inch over on the nav ball towards the horizon. I typically go onto the 90 degree side, and we aim for this direction until about 20,000 meters above sea level. At that point, I'll check the map, and I typically want to see that rounding, or I, I typically want to hold that inclination until we're seeing about 100 kilometers above Kerbin. And that's where about where we hit it, but you'll see these solid fuel boosters give me a ton of delta V, so I'm actually going to let them burn out a little bit more, and I'll have a nice slow separation afterwards. I just love how that always looks, and they'll burn up in Kerbin atmosphere. We're going to add a maneuver at the tip of that apoapsis. I want to make sure the periapsis is going to be about the same size. And you'll see I forgot to put monopropellant on this rocket ship, so I'm going to actually use the built-in propulsion unit to get us to that maneuver node. It wastes a little bit of delta V, but you can see we have a ton to spare. Way too much for this mission, but sometimes overkill isn't a bad thing when you have an unlimited budget in Kerbal Space Program. So we're making about a one minute long burn. This is going to fill out that orbit nice and evenly. And after that, we've situated ourselves about 200 kilometers above Kerbin. The other spaceship I have is orbiting about 500,000 away. That used some radial docking ports. Today we're just going to be doing nose to nose. Very, very, very simple. And I'm just rounding out that periapsis again until we have about 200 on the apoapsis and the periapsis, and that's where I'm going to hit it. Now we'll have a nice decoupling of that payload. I love how that looks. Separated a little bit. I could have put a control module on the left on the rest of the debris so we can land that back into uh, Kerbin instead of having debris floating around. But it's just a sandbox mode, so I'll clean that up in the space station later. And I turned on the lights but quickly realized that I don't have any batteries on this ship or monopropellant thrusters, so that was kind of silly of me. We're going to close... We turned off the lights until we opened up the solar panels, and now we're good to go in orbit. Back to the space station. I'm going to be adding those little monopropellant thrusters on this one. I went with the small ones at first, but they are definitely too small. So I'm going to add some bigger ones instead. This will just help us line up. Now on this kind of maneuver or rendezvous, we don't necessarily need it, but it will help. It is good just to have for realism's sakes. And we send up the second one hitting that thruster to about three quarters once we hit 100 meters per second. And we're going to bank it again until about 15 to 20,000. Now you'll notice on this one, I probably hit it into that uh, positive prograde a little bit too long and didn't start banking until the horizon on the nav ball until a little bit later. So our apoapsis is going to be about 160,000 meters above carbon which is way 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 overkill but hey we made it and we're going to round that out with another maneuver node nice and simple very good there now the next step of this is we want to get both of these spacecraft into a very very similar orbit in terms of its inclination and their um, 
how much of the orbit they share. So you'll notice after I get this into position, and I forgot to put monopropellant on the rocket, so we're using the thruster on the bottom to get us back into that proper maneuver node. After about a minute of this, you'll see I'm going to check the uh, descending node in relation to that target ship. Now the other one, we'll line them up in a minute, but I want to make sure that we have as much of a uh, similarity with the two orbits as possible. That makes the lining up in the rendezvous just a lot easier. And we're setting it as a target, going to that descending node. You can see when I look at the orbit here, that blue line on my current is a little bit high. So I'm bringing it down until they're overlapping. Then I'm going to increase the prograde as well just to burn a little bit of our velocity up so we get into the orbit of the other one. Now I don't want the entire orbit to share because we need to catch up to it. So the fact that this one is a little bit closer in the periapsis means we're going to gain on the other one. And we blow out the fairings and the payload and off we go. At this point, I'm limiting the thruster. Uh, we had about a one second burn on the other, which is a little bit hard to eyeball it. So you turn the thruster down, it turns it into a longer burn. In this case, I put it about a 10%, which gave me a 10 second burn, a lot easier to manage. Now, once we're in two stable orbits, I typically like to quick save, uh, just because if you're flying by these things, you might have a good lineup that you miss. So it's good to be able to go back. You can see this first time, those two little orange triangles got too far away. The second time, they're nice and close. So we're about 20 kilometers away at our closest target position. We're going to warp to that. I made a little bit of an error in the cut here, so you'll see that I'm actually 23 kilometers away now, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to try to burn off all of our delta V. Now you see, compared to our target, we were 4 meters per second. At this point, we changed the maneuver node so it's towards the target, and we burn towards it until we see that that indicator on it starts to gain in distance again. Then we burn off our delta V, we hit the retrograde until it's at zero meters per second, then we hit the target again, that's what we're doing here. And now we're burning off that delta V until it's about zero meters, and then we're hitting towards the target and warping. Now you should always warp. Um, at this point, don't turn your thrusters up too much. I'd never try to go above 30 meters per second. It'll be about the same amount of time, but you don't have to kill all of that velocity when you're turning around in retrograde. And we have a couple more nodes to do here. It seemed to take a long time this time. I probably messed up or was rushing or didn't let it go all the way down to zero meters per second. If you really let it go down to right at zero, you can see it was 0.5 there. So if you let it go down to zero, you'll be a lot more accurate and not have to do as many burns. But in any case, we're hitting the retrograde, and now we're at, z now we're at zero, and now we're going to get nice and close. So I switched to the other uh, spaceship real quick, and I'm actually going to target the one that's approaching, and then change its maneuver node so it is also facing its target. This makes it really, really easy to do a front-to-front -front docking, because you know the other spacecraft is going to line up towards you. It won't do it while you're warping, but once you unwarp, you'll see it lining up. And we're getting nice and close here. I tried using the docking uh, port on the bottom. It's not necessary for this kind of dock since it's front to front. If you're doing a radial dock, you'll want to do that. We're getting nice and close here. And once they pop into each other, oh, pressed Z. That's an accident. That was not necessary. Uh, so I sort of crashed into our other probe. I hit the wrong button. And we just had to burn that Delta V back off. Luckily, there was no damage. Um... It was slow enough. I think it had about 10 meters per second. It was slow enough that we didn't damage anything. But in any case, that was an accident. And here we go. We're going to tap once, and the second tap is going to align us. And there we are. We have our new space station, front-to-front -front docking. Now, I don't want us to mess up the orbital flight, so I'm turning off one of the rockets. I'm going to keep the one with the monopropellant on just because I think it's going to hold us more steady. Turn on the lights, and there we are. Easy as that. A nice front-to-front -front space station. Really, really simple to create. Um, both of these Kerbals can now go back and forth between their pods. We can leave one of them in flight. It has a lot of liquid fuel left. And look at this. Not necessarily what I was aiming for, but we have a nice solar eclipse to finish off the video here.
very, very nice. So that's docking in Kerbal. We have only used vanilla stock parts. I don't have any mods installed on this one. I will be getting some soon, but thank you for watching.